this video on the Lambda Test YouTube channel. My name is Ivan Shorderia, also known as Western Test. So in this video, we're going to have a look at Cypress Viewport, testing your responsive designs. But before we go in and have a look at the agenda for the video, let me tell you a few things about Lambda Test. Lambda Test is an AI-powered test orchestration and execution platform that allows you to run manual and automated tests at scale. The platform allows you to perform both real-time and automation testing across more than 3,000 environments and real mobile devices. So by the end of this video, you will have known or you have reviewed what are viewports. If you will know if there are tools that we can use to check viewports and we'll see how Cypress fits in the picture. We'll look at how to test different screen sizes with Cypress, different devices, how we can um, play around and configure with orientation. We'll review throughout the video tips and tricks, and we will end everything by scaling and running our tests in the Lambda Test Cloud. So what are actually viewports? Well, a viewport refers to the visible area of a web page that is displayed within the browser window. As you can see in the image, the viewport is only the red part from the image. Why is it important to test viewports? Well, because if you make sure that your application renders correctly on different viewports and has correct user experience, scroll experience, and also that it was built with responsive design in mind, then you improve the quality of your product for your end user. So on the topic of tools, are there tools that you can use to check um, viewports? Well, there are. There are tools or emulators even in your browser. There is an emulator, a special browser on Lambda test that you can use um, to check uh, how a website looks on different screen sizes. However, all of these tools are manual tools. They take time to configure. And if you want to check a lot of screens, then it's hard with them to see bugs. So can Cypress actually help us? Well, yes. The answer is yes. In Cypress, it is very easy to test on different viewports and verify how your website behaves across different screen sizes by specifying the desired dimensions. So is it hard? What we're going to do, is it hard to start? No, it's actually really easy and I will guide you through all of the process. Plus you will have a repository at the end with all of the exercises that we're going to do in this video. You just need Node.js installed, you need an IDE, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code and you need patience. So let's get started. So to start off, we have one empty folder and we're going to add the folder. We already have the folder in Visual Studio Code. And to install Cypress, we need to make um, this project as an NPM project. So for that, we need to do NPM init. And this will start the whole process of um, creating a package JSON for us. So let's add a package name. We we'll leave the default. So in my case is lambda test minus viewport. First version description. Um, viewport to video. Entry point to leave it default. Test command default. There's no GitHub repository at the moment. We're going to add it later. Keywords. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Let's do Cypress. Author. Studeria. License. Okay. And as you can see here, we have the package JSON being created. So after we have uh, made sure that we have the package JSON installed, or better said, created, we need to install Cypress. And that can be done by doing npm install Cypress. And this will install for us the latest version of Cypress. 
depending on your computer, depending on your connection, this might take a few minutes, but as you can see, it's already started to create a separate folder with node modules, and it will install also Cypress there. So Cypress has been installed, and um, we have no errors, and we can also see it here in our package.json. Now, in order to be able to actually start our code, we need to start Cypress so that we can configure it a little bit. For that, we do npx Cypress open. And at the time of creating this video, the latest version of Cypress is version 13.6. So again, here we need just a little bit of patience for Cypress to start. It's the first time it starts, it does its checks, it does, it does its configuration, but afterwards it's all going to be way faster, I promise. So we have here um, the option of choosing between end-to-end -end and component, we're going to do end-to-end. -end. We have here all of the default uh, files, just to continue. And we can actually try and run our first test. Now, Cypress does ask us if we want to create a new spec or if we want some example specs. We will just create a new spec file because we're doing everything from scratch. And let's just leave the default at the moment. Create spec. Perfect. And we have our first test. So now that we have installed Cypress and we have our first test, let's do some minor changes in order to see what we are testing. And for that, we go to Cypress end to end and then our spec file. And let's just rename this to uh, I don't know view. Um, let's just see, check URL, and we're going to visit this URL right here. So let me just open Cypress. And in Cypress, we have then this test, which is basically opening this URL. And in order to see how, what is our setting in regards to different screen sizes, we can have a look here in the upper right corner of the test. As you can see, it has a scaling of 1000 per 660 pixels at the moment. And even if I make this smaller or bigger, it will still try to have that default scale. How can we change this in Cypress? So in Cypress, if we want change the view um, or the size of the screen, Cypress has something called ci.viewport. With this, we can simulate different viewports in, in Cypress. We can either simulate it by specifying a width and a height, or there are preset values for different screen sizes that we can use. Let's see that in action. So in order to see how the viewport um, works, let me just copy this file and we just will rename it a little bit. Okay, so we just will do um, single viewport and dot ci dot js. Now, as we've seen, um, in order to access the viewport, we do ci.viewport. But the question is, do we put ci.viewport before we visit or after we visit? 
So let's try before and after. In the before one, I'm going to put um, a width and a height. So I'm going to go with the old school 640 or 480. Let me just change this one as well. Single viewport. Um, single test. So if we do this and we run the test, We will see that we have a viewport right here. We change the viewport, and our site rendered in this size 640 or 480. Now, what would happen if we actually did CI the viewport after the visit? And here, let's um, not input a number. Let's input um, a specific preset. So what I mean by preset, so something like um, iPhone 8. Let's see if that works. And it did work. So in Cypress, you have, in regards to the viewport, two possibilities. You can either specify a width and a height, or you can use a couple of presets. So if you know you want to, or if you want to check um, how your website looks on an iPhone or an iPad, a specific model, then you can just specify that. And Cypress will know what are the sizes. Nice, right? So let's go a little bit deeper into this topic. So while we did see that we can specify um, a viewport and check one viewport at a time, Cypress also offers the possibility of specifying multiple viewports, so of doing or of checking your application in multiple viewports in one single test. Let's have a look how we can do this with code. So um, before we continue, um, just want to do one thing. Um, I want to rename this x.ci.js into no underscore viewport viewport because um, this is the only one where we will not have a viewport. And as you can see, I created two other um, tests or two other spec files. Just copying this no viewport one. So let me just close all the others. And in this viewport, we in this multiple viewport test, we want to see how we can perform this test by checking the URL and performing it on multiple viewports in one test. So let's just rename the describe of log multiple viewports. And how can we do this? Well. Firstly, we will define an array of viewports. And that array will have the information that you saw in the PowerPoint presentation. So we have um, here um, an array with three entries, one with a, uh, one for desktop, mobile, and one for tablet. So how can we use this in our test? Well, we will take advantage of the fact that Cypress supports JavaScript and it supports also all of the JavaScript array methods. So we're going to do a for each here. So we do viewports dot for each. And in this for each, we're going to define the following. So we're going to give a name for each of the elements here. So let's say I know use. And we're going to do an arrow function that will perform the following. It will do ci dot viewport and here it will say um, view or use dot width 
and then use dot type and we'll just copy this visit part from here to here so what will this do it will iterate this array and before visiting it will change the viewport and so when we run this test we should see the test visiting the page three times and showing us uh, three different viewports so let's have a look at this one right here and we have three so one two and three visits the first one let's stop the second one and the fourth one perfect but does this also work with presets so let's try the same with presets so we describe this um, multiple presets presets and we're going to use a similar approach constant let's do presets and here we just need to define um, some again yeah, some 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 presets. So I chose four this time, and the process is pretty pretty similar, if not almost the same. With the only change that instead of um, needing to specify the height and the width, we'll just have the presets so we do presets for each and let's do I don't know make it device device and in here we're going to do dot viewport we're going to say device and again let's just take this from here and paste it right here and if we did everything correctly when we run test it should run on multiple devices. Multiple presets. So we have one, two, three, and four. Perfect. Now, since we are on the topic of devices, let's have a look what we can do with them. Now, another thing which is important to check when doing uh, viewport testing is check how your website looks in different orientations. And we can do that really easy with Cypress because Cypress viewport or ci.viewport has the possibility of changing the orientation from portrait to landscape. Let's see how we can do that in code. So in order to do this uh, with code, I just copied our test, which had no viewports, and I renamed the description and uh, the it block to match what we are testing, and we're checking for orientation. So to change the orientation of the device, we do ci.viewport, and in here, we'll just um, enter one preset and since we did a lot with iPhones let's just do something with Samsung and then we say landscape and if we run this now in Cypress We can have the orientation landscape. We can try to, to change this and to do okay, one time we do landscape and then we do CI viewport and then we put portrait. So portrait and we'll copy the same. So if we restart the test right now, then we see we have landscape. And then we have portrait. Perfect. So we have seen how we can 
set up in a test um, different viewports or different configurations. But is there a way to not have to set it per test, but to set a global configuration? There is, if we do a uh, setup in the config of Cypress. So let's have a look at how we can do that in code. So in order to change or to set a global configuration, we need to go into the cypress.config.js file and under the define config above end to end, we will need to define the default width and the default height. This configuration will be available in the GitHub repository that you will find uh, in the description of the video. So we define here a viewport width and a viewport height. And if we did everything correctly, when we run now our Cypress tests, those tests should run um, on these viewports. So let's have a look how, how it is. Select the no viewport. And we can already see here it goes on 1000 per 660. And this is because we have no viewport defined. But if we have a viewport defined, what actually happens? So let us select one with um, multiple viewports. And as you can see, it ignores our global configuration and it actually takes into account the viewports that we have defined, which is perfect because we do want to have a global configuration, but on the other hand, we do want in, in case we need it in our test to be able to set up a viewport that is specific to what we're testing. So we have seen how we can define a global setup um, for our viewports. Now, there is another way to have um, the possibility of defining customized viewports when running our tests. But for that, I need to do the following. I need to, on the one hand, enable video. So in the terminal, uh, we can use MTX Cypress run. And this will run our test in headless mode. Now, besides telling Cypress run our test in headless mode, we can also provide some parameters, one of which is customize width and customize height. With this command right here, I will be able to run our tests in headless mode. And in case we have no viewport defined, then it should take this width and this height and not the default ones that we have. Let me just add this comment again here that you have it in the repository. Now we will need to be a little bit patient because it will Cypress will run all of the tests and for each of the tests we create a video. So now that the tests have run, let's have a look under videos. And we have here videos for each of the tests. And if we take the one with no viewport. We should be able to see it running and it ran in the custom viewport that we gave it and not in the viewport that was provided right here. Perfect. So we have seen how to run our Cypress tests locally and how to take advantage of the Cypress viewport functionality. Now we want to scale, we want to see how we can. Um, run tests in cloud, how we can run tests on multiple devices at the same time. And for that, we're going to have a look at how to run the tests in the Lambda test cloud. For that, we just need an account. We're going to install the Lambda test CLI, we're going to configure it, and we're going to run our tests. So let's get coding. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order to um, run our tests in the cloud, we need to install the Lambda test CLI. So we do that by doing npm install Lambda test Cypress CLI. And once we have installed that, we're going to need to, well, initialize it. Do that by doing Lambda test minus Cypress init. 
this is going to, uh, to create the lambda test config JSON for us. Now, as I mentioned before, you need a username and an access key. And this one has to be yours. But besides that, and you can get this in your Lambda test account. So let's see where you can get this. So you get this by um, going into Lambda test. For example, you go to your account settings, password and security, and here you have your username and your access key. Um, so you'll need to copy them in your configuration file. I'll do this for mine. So once you have entered your credentials, you need to do a little bit more changes. So on the one hand, you need to tell Cypress where your specs are. You will also need to change the Cypress version. And here we have the old Cypress JSON config, and I'll change it to Cypress dot config dot js and if we have done everything correctly we can now do lambda test cypress run and our test should run have one small thing here i forgot to do this to change the cypress underscore config to config file now if this should run Looks already good. Uploading our dependencies. So it says to check the dashboard. So let's have a look at the dashboard. And in the dashboard, we can see that it is running our test. So at the moment, it's running our uh, first test, the multiple viewports test. If we want, we can, uh, we can have a look inside to see what it is doing. I'm going to pause the video and have a look again once it has done everything. So it's still um, running because I made it running in multiple uh, browsers. But if we have a look at one of our tests here, we see that it passed and we can even have a look and see what how it looked like on the on the cloud so this one should uh, change the viewport a couple of times depending on our configuration and it seems to work like a charm perfect now this was how to scale everything using the lambda test cloud and it's a wrap. We have seen everything that we wanted to cover in this video. And I hope you liked the video. Now, you might be asking, what are the next steps? Well, I would recommend the following. First, go ahead and check other videos on the Lambda Test YouTube channel. Have a look at the Lambda Test blogs if you haven't already. There's a lot of information on Cypress and testing in general, and specifically test automation. And if you want to try your Cypress skills and not only, head over to the Lambda Test Certificates page and get your certification in Cypress from Lambda Test. Thank you for watching the video. Have a good one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.